Lounge. I'm Holly Brown and today I've got some holiday cooking going on. I'm thinking about my recipe and my menus and, and all of the things I'm going to do for holiday cooking and Thanksgiving. Um, I don't know about you, but I have certain things that I do every year and then one or two things that I try and mix it up and do something new. Um, this is one of the things that I do absolutely every year. It's cranberry chutney. And actually, um, it came from this book. You can see this is a well-worn book, lots of uh, little placeholders that I've used over the years. Um, but this is a real winner. This book is called The Thanksgiving Table, and it's by Diane Morgan. And if you want to be inspired by some wonderful holiday recipes, I highly suggest you get this book. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you how to make this cranberry chutney. It's wonderful, beautiful, has some really wonderful textures and um, flavorings to it, and so here's, what's, here's what goes in it. Um, there's four cups of fresh cranberries. You want to make sure that these are fresh and that they're de-stemmed and that there aren't any um, soft ones, that they're all nice and firm. We've got a cup of golden raisins, two and a half cups of sugar. We have a half cup here of hazelnuts, and these are toasted and um, uh, diced. And then we have a third cup of crystallized ginger, which we will go ahead and dice up. And we'll also dice this beautiful onion, these two um, Granny Smith green uh, apples, and then these two beautiful Bosque pears. And then last but not least for our spices, we have a teaspoon of salt, we have two cinnamon sticks, and about six cloves. So I'll go ahead and peel and core and slice and dice all of the fruit, and then I'll show you how it all comes together in the pot. And then I'll show you what a beautiful, beautiful presentation it makes. So I hope you like this one. I hope you'll try it. Um, stick around. I'll be right back. Okay, we're going to chop up this fruit. I just wanted to show you how we're going to handle that. We're just going to slice the fruit, the pears and the apples, down the middle. We want to essentially get the seeds out of the middle. I like to use just a paring knife and go right around that middle bit. Take that right out. Take this little bit off. And then gently go around and grab that skin and get the skin off. And then once we get all of the skin off, we're going to slice it into very small bites. Imagine you want to get a little bit of cranberry, a little bit of onion, a little bit of pear, and a little bit of apple, as well as some of that crystallized ginger and the hazelnuts all in any given bite. So when you think about that, that sort of tells you how big your little bits need to be here. So we're going to slice those up pretty small, just like that. And we'll do that for both pears. And similarly, we'll do it for the apples. So we'll go right down the middle, just like that. I love the sound of that. And uh, just get this little bottom bit off here and uh, take out the middle. If you have a core at home, that's great. Um, if you don't, a nice paring knife works just perfectly. Take off that. And then we're just going to grab the skin, just like that, and go all the way around. And similarly to the pears, we'll cut in pretty fine slices and then cut them up a bit more as well. They will cook down a bit, um, but they will actually remain just ever so slightly crunchy and uh, just a wonderful texture with all of this fruit. So I'll continue to finish that up. The onions, I'll uh, slice and dice the uh, crystallized ginger, and then we'll throw it all into the pan. So we've got all of our pears, onions, uh, apples completely chopped, all sitting right here. But what we're going to do is we're going to start by uh, putting our heat up to about medium high. I'm sorry, medium heat. We're going to put uh, a cup and a quarter of water. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, dissolve our sugar with our cranberries and our salt and spices. That was that one teaspoon of salt. We've got a couple of cinnamon sticks and six cloves and four cups of cranberries. And we're going to put all of that over medium heat and we're going to stir it until the sugar dissolves. We're going to stir quite a bit, probably for about 10 or 12 minutes. And at about 10 minutes, maybe 12, we'll start to hear the cranberries pop. 
and that's a good sign, not a bad sign. Um, just make sure that uh, your heat doesn't get too high and that, they're, that you're not splashing yourself. But um, what happens then is the cranberries start to, um, they pop and they sort of open up and they start to take in the sugar and then everything gets sort of soft and gooey and really, really nice. At that point, we'll lower the temperature and uh, we'll start to put in our fruit, our raisins, our ginger, and then we'll let that cook a little bit. And then last but not least, when everything's done, we'll throw in the, wall, the hazelnuts at the end. And then we'll let it cool and uh, it'll be delicious. Do you hear that popping? The cranberries are definitely starting to pop. And you can see they're starting to boil. We're just going to stir for a couple more minutes. See it's starting to get pink and the cranberries are breaking down, absorbing all that wonderful sugar. And I'm going to start, I'm going to turn it down to a simmer now and then add all of this beautiful fruit as well as the onions. Hopefully not get it all over my stove, but it's happened before. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And then we're going to continue to cook that with these golden raisins and the ginger. See how beautiful this is looking. For another uh, 10 to 15 minutes or so, it's going to thicken and it's going to all come together with those beautiful flavors. And then we'll take it off the heat, we'll add the nuts, and we'll let it cool. So our chutney is all cooked and it's getting thick. It'll actually get thicker as it cools. Now it's time to put in those hazelnuts. So we'll just sprinkle those over the top and stir them in. Isn't that just such a beautiful, beautiful color? And as I said, it'll thicken up quite a bit, but I want to show you how I typically serve the chutney because it's just such a special piece to the meal. Um, you can choose a pretty decorative uh, glass. This little champagne glass is really pretty, or just this classic dessert glass. And uh, what I do is I put one at the, head, at the top of um, each plate, and it just makes for a really lovely look at the end. So there we are. As I said, it'll be thicker, much thicker, when you actually cool it. Isn't that pretty? Such a pretty dessert. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Brown Lounge. I hope you look forward to the holidays and definitely try this cranberry chutney. See you next time on the Brown Lounge. Thank you.